So anyways, that being said, let's get to Ecuador. Uh, let's play some of this footage. This is, uh, I would recommend this is a good account. I follow uh, Camila from uh, Telesaur here and there's some video footage of basically a movement and an uprising that is led by indigenous people and labor unions in Ecuador right now. And to understand this, the top line is, is that the Lenin Moreno government is imposing new uh, IMF guided austerity measures, which is, this is a very traditional Latin American story, which is Western, US, World Bank, IMF interests, imposing policies that damage the vast majority of people in the country. Now, the bigger history to this, which is pretty fascinating, it, it goes back to the presidency of Rafael Correa. Rafael Correa uh, was one of the lead Pink Tide presidents. We've done a segment on him before with regards to uh, like Lula and like others, and in his, in his case, extremely questionable charges uh, brought against him. Uh, he's in Brussels, though. He won't return to Ecuador while the current government is in power, and rightfully so. Clearly, there is a politically aimed prosecution in him. Correa, like other pink tide presidents, significantly cut poverty. He had an enormous courage in standing up to the United States. His environmental and indigenous rights record was significantly more mixed, to say the least. However, of course, we have to look at this uh, structurally. Uh, and he did play on some socially conservative policy, uh, policies. However, uh, he was undoubtedly part of the block of the pink tide and anti-hegemonic -hege force. So when we contextualize these, these broader dynamics, we have to place people clearly. Now, he was succeeded by a guy named Lenin Moreno, who's in power now, and was from Correa's political party. He was, in fact, mentored by Correa. In power, Lenin Moreno has abruptly shifted to the hard right. He would brand himself internationally, and of course he gets a lot of support in doing this as taking a moderate turn, a centrist turn, an institution building turn. But in fact, uh, he has been extremely repressive, extremely heavy handed. Uh, there's the charges against his predecessor, um, which are almost undoubtedly politically motivated in my view. Uh, there has been steady assaults on the social base of the left across the board, uh, and as well as um, him uh, ejecting Julian Assange from the Ecuadorian embassy, which is very important from the perspective of how Ecuador is positioning himself itself internationally. These protests might be the final straw. Lenin Moreno has actually moved the cap, moved his government from the capital Quito to another city. Uh, and appeared in a very ominous address with the military brass and blamed this coup on Maduro and Correa from abroad. Uh, and Correa rejected these things out of hand. Uh, I'm going to quote now from an article in uh, DW, the uh, website, the German website, German news website. On, on a Monday evening address uh, from the cap from... Uh, Guayacal, Moreno pledged to stick to the subsidies decision. That's cutting fuel subsidies. That's the IMF policy that's been put in place on Ecuador. Moreno also accused his exile predecessor, Rafael Correa, of trying to oust him with the help of Venezuela's Nicolas Maduro. Maduro and Correa have begun their destabilization plan, said Maduro, appearing together with his top military chiefs. Correa responded, telling reporters in Belgium, they are liars. They say I'm so powerful that with an iPhone from, Br from Brussels, I could lead protests. People couldn't take it anymore. That's the reality. Now, I have no doubt that there's political maneuvers uh, amongst all players here. And Rafael Correa is an incredibly savvy political player. But the reality is, is that something like this does not happen without an organic dissent. And all of the obvious ingredients for an organic dissent are there, which is that Lenin Moreno has followed a repressive neoliberal course, which is reversing the gains of its previous government, specifically with the rights of the poor people. And this slashing of a fuel subsidy, this classic IMF extractive move, as well as being an errand boy of the military interests of the United States with a U.S.-backed resurgence far right across Latin America, is not sitting well with the Ecuadorian people. That is the fundamental reality right here. 
It's also quite significant that the power of indigenous people are at the center of this movement so that if the Moreno government is forced to leave power, which we hope it will be, the next wave of the left will center indigenous sovereignty and rights in its ecological and rights program. That's what's happening in Ecuador. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.